Hello everybody, my name is Aceface, here we see a golem in space among snow. We've got snow in space here with the Winter Nexus event, the Christmas event of 2022. We're here facing Sancho. We've got these white storm forward bases and these are the main combat sites you can find in Highsig. I've previously done this with a rattlesnake, it went very smoothly. However, I decided that we go all in with a golem which is able to just completely annihilate anything in its path. A lot more DPS than a rattlesnake, not as much buffer. And that's something I worry about in these sites because these are open sites so anyone can just jump in there with a battleship or any type of ship class. So you can sort of think that it would be a high risk situation for uh, ganks because you've got a battleship that's pretty stationary, you don't have to move much in this site, you don't have to actually move at all. So theoretically a full gank fleet of catalysts could just jump in and easily gank you, not at all difficult because you'll be in on the warp in point. Uh, so that's why I prefer to use a rattlesnake because it's got a really big buffer, it's able to survive ganks a bit better. But this golem, not as much buffer. I've still got high grade nirvanas because it enables you to have a bit bigger buffer. Uh, we have so much DPS, 3k DPS, so we're going to be able to beat any competition. The only thing I could see is if you have some kind of ship that perhaps I think I saw some some people already there, so I'm not going to even bother warping on this one because I saw like a battleship in the, in the overview. The, and other people are there, but here we could actually perhaps be outcompeted by a ship that's got guns because guns will be able to instantly apply to the targets, so we'll be, they'll get sort of have an edge on us. So, say for example, with really good pulse lasers, a paladin I think would be actually quite good. So, we might try, uh, try using a paladin next. Uh, I think a paladin could be a very good alternative and perhaps even a better alternative than the golem because the missile travel time does take, play into account when you're competing with other people so we probably should try a paladin next actually i think that would be a good test let's warp in here we can also see if there's anyone close by looking just to a small scan we see there's a golem and chronos oh i've been doing these sites previously and i've not found any uh, marauders at all now suddenly when i'm in my own marauder i find all other marauders when you're doing these uh, sites, just keep in mind to always tick these boxes when you've completed the challenge because you're not going to get any rewards if you don't uh, like click the rewards to claim them. Okay, we're 100% not going to get this because they've already started firing. We can try, but there's no chance because we've not at all got any DPS compared to what they've already been landing on these guys. Can we do anything? Nah, there's no chance. We can maybe land one volley if we we didn't even land. We'd land one volley. Okay. And there's only one white storm forward base in the system. Those went down very quickly. Let's go to the next system of Sarakua because there's a bunch of... That's a, there's storms all over the place here in Kaldari. But I think Paladin definitely would be really great at this. You can see if we can devise a fit here. Okay, Paladin, probably Paladin would be great with some big plates because then it will be slightly more gank proof. Let's see if I have anything here. Sniper, Trig Hunter... Helpful fit, extreme close. Okay, this is something we would want to use probably. And then perhaps I would want to have, instead of this multi spectrum, I'd perhaps have a 1600 millimeter steel plate. So we get 153k EHP. And I don't think we'll need all this capacity that we've got here. Oh, we can't jump. Well. That's unfortunate. We can use our large cat battery here to get some extra capacitor. Perhaps have a collision accelerator. We want to go here. There we go. I think a burst aerator would be good. Large energy burst aerator. And then put a small capacitor control circuit. We don't even need to use that capacitor control circuit. And then we can remove these Nosferatus. We don't need them. Now uh, there's nothing here. You can check. Uh, what other systems have volatile ice, ice storms on the map by ticking metaliminal storms in this geography tab? So we've got Ichinumi, we can check out that system. See what's there. Something like this would be good. If conflagration 2.7k DPS, if I were to have implants in the boost, this would achieve probably almost 3k DPS. Overheat 3.1k, so probably 3.5 if we were to have implants in. Range is also good, very good range for the the distance these Sancho spawn in. Uh, we don't need any mobility really because everything is already just sitting there. And we have this optimal range which we can use. The grapple will be great for extra application. 
I think this would be a very solid fit. Expensive, but should be quite solid. Having this double A-type multi-spectrum will give a decent amount of buffer, but not as much, but give us really good armor repair rate. Oh, there's a lot of alts here. You see this? What is this? Sleepers. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of sites here. We'll get to work. I like to... I want to try to make a habit of me activating these multi-spectrums when I go from system to system. Just in case we've got gankers on the other side. It's probably very likely they'll get me, but in the odd chance they don't get me, or they will, it will probably be if I remember to activate these multi-spectrums. If I don't, then I think anything almost could gank me. How much EHP do we have without this? Oh, without Bastion 70k, so it's not a whole lot. Let's warp into the site here. Yeah. I've got rage torpedoes. I've not equipped any uh, Kaldari Navy. I could do that if I want to get extra application. But uh, the thing is, you I, I prefer to keep the high damage ammunition in all the time just because I'll always be able to do max damage to the boss. Ah, oh, there's already someone here. Cyclone. Let's activate Bastion. Can we lock this guy up? Ah, he's already done. We'll go to the next site. There's no sites that are unoccupied. I need more unoccupied sites. White Storm forward base. Come on now. We'll keep the scan on small, then we can see whatever's close. There's Praxis here, okay. Let's see what's close. We've got Praxis, Praxis of Indicated. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff here. Forget about that. Try the next one. So populated suddenly. Because I think this is the first day that the event is out, so there's a lot more people than usual. Everyone just wants to swarm these sites to see what's in them, including myself. <laughs> oh, we've got Crusader. Wouldn't surprise me if he's going around uh, stealing loot. I think Crusaders, they're able to resist warp? No, that's a malediction that's able to do that. Oh, I don't know. Have they, they reworked the bubble immunity or the interdiction immunity? I can't even do the interdiction in high sec, never mind. <laughs> Okay, what do we have here? Impel, Balgorn, oh, there's, there's nothing we can do. I can just see if there's something here. I doubt there'll be anything. Yeah, it's already gone. Okay. Go to Ichinumi instead. There's too many people running the sites. It's all concentrating on these few locations with storms as well. But the good thing about this is that you sort of know where you should look. Sometimes when there are sites that just spawn randomly, it just feels like I can go on and on forever and not find anything. It's, at least here you sort of see them, but at the same time it's a bit annoying because everyone's here and there's a lot more competition, it feels like. Really cool looking golem. Next system, I wonder if you could see the, the adjacent anomalies. Can you see? Yeah, you can actually. You can see them here. So you could actually use the tab here the anomalies tab to see what is nearby in the adjacent systems there's not a whole lot a lot of people here what is here there's nothing here okay great so we can at least do one side thank you very much activate multi-spectrums i think it's because this system is further out than the other ones so that we're finding less people here but i can imagine there's going to be people swarming in from the previous system who have run out of sights because they take a bit of time to respawn I'm not sure if there's like a fixed trait at respawning or just a little bit randomly when they respawn. Feels like they just respawn from time to time. Okay, and let's do this. This is the same golem I use for triglavian hunting, but I've sort of refitted it slightly. Uh, well, it's pretty much the same fit. I've just got a tractor beam and different ammunition type. And I've removed a ton of stuff from the cargo so that we can grab loot. Okay. Let's have NPCs spawn in. Well, they spawn in directly, they don't seem to be warping, having any warping animation. That's good because then they don't take a long time to lock up. And sometimes if they're warping, it's like, oh, they're sitting there, warping, invulnerable, 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 and then you can lock finally. It's a bit annoying. And this grappler is great because it helps a lot with applying to these small scrubs. I uh, use it for trick lab and hunting is really important, actually. 1.7k volley is no joke. But it is a bit of a joke when your potential volley is 10k. 
Right, let's destroy these frigates. 1k. Okay, good. And this shear boost is really powerful. It just boosts up so much. Not as much as it usually would if you compare this to my Triglavi hunting videos because I'm using high gradient violence just for extra buffer. Alright, these guys, there he is. But this event is pretty easy. It would be nice if they were to add more, you could say, uh, high level sites to high sec or difficult sites to high sec because I find it pretty easy. And I mean, you have the more difficult sites in low sec, but the problem is. Like people are not going to be as willing to bring out their big bad uh, or like big uh, and powerful ships to low sec because they're usually going to be more expensive than the cheaper ones. And then that's even further made difficult that there's players who are there. So like why would you want to take a more expensive ship when there's more risk of getting destroyed yourself? To me it would make sense that they also have more difficult sites in high sec. But the, the, the main difference is that the loot is not as good that they give a big loot bonus when you're in low sec but there's still you can have challenging stuff i don't think just because it's like high sec i don't think it means that you should not have challenging stuff here i just think the loot should be adjusted to be according with the risk of you know having pirates and that kind of stuff because it's like you see here my marauders just got no problem whatsoever not even trying to tank this and i just have no problem you could have a really tough sides that are made for marauders they have give more loot than the standard ones but nothing compared to low sec because obviously in low sec you're risking a lot of stuff and all people say like oh yeah low sec is made for the high end late game players but like uh, even me who's been playing this for a long time i just feel like it's silly to just bring something like this to low sec uh, obviously i don't have to bring a marauder but you can try to find cost efficient stuff but i think it would be nice to have stuff in high sec it's a bit more challenging in terms of pve not pvp uh, not the pvp aspect but we got a decent amount of risk there actually 24 million is a lot more than we had previously we've got this white storm booster what does this give? Heat damage modifier. So this is actually good if you want to overheat a lot. And I know that there's a ship. I think it's called the Cambion. Because I saw this uh, review by a Reload a long time ago. You, you fellow EVE Online YouTuber. And he said that this is good at overheating. Reduction in heat damage amount taken. Yeah, exactly. So you use this boosting combination with this. Just permanently overheat, basically. <laughs> okay, so we had the Winter Nexus in the Golem. Pretty smooth, pretty smooth, or very smooth. There's no challenge whatsoever. This thing just gets straight through it. I think it's a bit overkill. Good for competing, though, if you have other people nearby. But I wouldn't say it's as good as the Rattlesnake if you want to be a bit more, have a bit more peace of mind doing this because you're going to have a little bit less buffer than a Rattlesnake. And a Rattlesnake is just going to be so crazy, just going to be able to withstand larger gank fleets. And obviously, any just anything can get ganked. Just have to have a big enough gank fleet, but... Uh, I think the Rattlesnake has a lot more likelihood of surviving compared to a Golem. Especially Golems, they're just, just sort of a big gank magnet in themselves because everyone likes to destroy a Golem. A lot more braggable than having a Rattlesnake. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Winter Nexus in the Golem. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.